attacked by Madeline Sims. Her name is Madeline. We won't give her last name before, I'm afraid, fear of retribution. Madeline, thank you so much for joining uh, me. I know it's been a difficult time for you and it's a bit daunting to have your first TV interview as well on top of that. Can you <laughs> start off by... Can you start off by saying, what work did you do for Madeline Sims? Uh, so I worked for Madeline um, as a party entertainer, so like a, a children's party entertainer. And uh, what did you do that upset her so? I, well, as you know, on Facebook, you can put a filter on your profile photo and it will say, vote yes, or have a little rainbow on it. And there are hundreds of those, there's so many, but there's only one that says it's okay to vote no. And I used that profile filter and she saw it and she didn't like it. Now the profile picture was just of you um, dressed in her uniform or anything like that? No, no, not at all. It was just my pro it was just a profile photo that I have of me with a friend's dog and uh, over the top, a little blue banner on the bottom said, it's okay to vote no. Now, so there was nothing to say, you know, look, uh, I work for Madeline Smith and uh, I've got to vote no thing. So it's just your point of view. Yeah. Uh, the saddest thing about that story is that you've got to borrow a dog, get one of your own next time. But uh, listen, <laughs> she, then, she then says, you, this, this proves to her that you are a homophobe. And you are not safe mm. to let near children. That sounds extremely rough to me. I is she right in any respect? I am the oldest of eight kids. I have helped in Sunday schools and um, church camps and kids camps. And I'm a nanny at the moment. I, I've always worked around children. Children are just what I know. And to be called a homophobe and to say that I'm a risk for the children I work with and the families of the children I work with, I highly disagree. Like, highly disagree. Yeah, well, I... Look, I'm not one to sue. I mean, I believe in free speech, but by crikey, you must be tempted to sue, sue someone for A, sacking you without, in my opinion, good reason, and B, vilifying you like this. Um, as far as legal reason goes, I'm still kind of sitting on it. I'm, I don't, I don't want to lash out or made seem like I'm doing something uh, just for, just because now everything's very public and I can do something about it. So I'm just trying to, like, this is all very new to me. I've only learned about all this today. So I, I'm just processing a bit right now as far as that is going. Oh, look, I, look, I don't blame you. It must be like at the centre of a whirlwind. I'm just wondering, um, since all this broke out and, and you've had your, you know, your reputation trashed around the country and you lost your job, um, what, what's happened since? Have you had support or have you had abuse? Or how do you feel? I've, I've had quite a lot of support. Um, a lot of my friends have messaged and they've, they've told me that they're very proud of me and that, you know, they think it was wrong and they, that I shouldn't have been, you know, let go. Um, and, you know, of course, I agree with that. I, but, um, no, I've had my family and friends right next to me and it's been really helpful. It's been really, really appreciated. Well. Let's go to the heart of the matter here, the, the, the burning issue. Do you, Madeline, think that you should be allowed to say no to same-sex marriage without losing your job? Well, yes, that, that is the point of this vote. Um, you know, this is a democracy, and we were given the options and asked, as Australians, to vote yes or no. And it is my opinion to vote no. And I don't think that my job should, you know, be taken away from me just because I have an opinion that someone disagrees with, you know? I, I, I don't think I should have been fired. <laughs> I'll say that again. Um, and have you got, to, <laughs> in case anyone else wants to offer you a job, have you got any other uh, work there or are you uh, out now looking? Uh, I do actually, at the moment, have a job. I am a nanny, um, and 
I love it. Again, I'm working with kids, and um, I, I nanny for a family who has a different religion than I am. Like that, like we we have different religions, um, and we probably have different opinions on the vote too. But I was told by my boss today. She says no. You're entitled to your own opinion, and so I'm. I'm very glad that I have that support at this job now. Madeline, uh, thank you so much for coming on. I find this just amazing. Uh, that this is not the Australia I know, uh, but apparently we've just got to wake up to it. I'm, I'm very sorry this has happened to you. Thank you so much for your time. A lot of conversation thanks to a sign out front. It's a story you'll see only on CBS 58. The store owner says the sign is a warning for anyone who may be easily offended. He spoke with CBS 58's Julie Parisi who joins us live with the details. Julie, so well, what is this all about? Well, Mike and Bill, that sign is inside the first set of double doors here at this Dairy Queen. It's been there for almost four years, and people in town here, they know it well. It was recently when an out-of-town customer noticed it and put it on social media that it sparked national attention. <laughs> Business is good at this Kewaskum Dairy Queen, thanks in part to a sign that's hanging on the front door. I felt the sign was appropriate to hang in terms of uh, just being transparent about the types of expression that the owner and or the staff may do in terms of uh, supporting God and country. It says, in God we trust, tells potential customers that employees may say things like Merry Christmas and offers free Sundays to veterans on Veterans Day. It just seems that those kind of values and principles for some reason are becoming controversial in our society. Store owner Kevin Scheinemann says the sign hasn't caused any problems before. But recently, someone visiting from Oregon posted it on Dairy Queen's national Facebook page to complain. Since then, there's been some negative comments, but also a lot of praise. In fact, this man drove all the way from the Cincinnati area just to visit and take a picture with Shineman. Yeah, we're a small town, and I've always said Merry Christmas. April Sareway owns a business in town. She says as a fellow business owner, Shineman has a right to post whatever he wants. If you don't agree with it or like it, you don't have to walk through the door. People in this small town tell us most residents share the same values. on the western slope has come under fire before for handing out Bibles to students. And now this student says her teachers changed her grades and counselors wrote her bad letters of recommendation because she questioned it. 
As the school year gets underway in Delta, Colorado, administrators now have some hefty reading of their own, a 30-page lawsuit from a recent Delta High grad. She was an honor student, a wonderful student. The suit alleges Sydney Fisk almost failed her senior year and was denied college scholarships because of school staff. Not only did they change her grades, they took away her recommendations and they ostracized her. The allegations began when the school hired this speaker to come in for a sex ed assembly. Her website says she is passionate passionately committed to Jesus Christ as the answer for teen sex. We maintain that the Delta administrators, uh, all the way up to the principal of the school, um, used religion to educate and control students to a certain extent. And when Sydney, an atheist, questioned that, she says her grades were changed to F's almost immediately. Freedom of religion is not only freedom of religion, it's freedom to uh, disagree with religion, to not have a religion. She says her teacher told her he lowered the grades because she questioned religious authority and that if she wanted her grades to go up, she should fake it until she makes it. I will certainly fight to protect everybody's religious views and the right to practice religion, but I think when you seek to impose your religious views on others, uh, that's dangerous. And he says it's unconstitutional. We have a constitutional protection that says that there is a separation of church and state. Religion does not belong in the schools. It's not to be taught in the schools. Her attorney says this case is about making sure everyone has an equal voice. Texas school district is under fire for saying a prayer during a mandatory staff meeting. Now, the Freedom From Religion Foundation is calling for McKinney Independent School District Superintendent Rick McDaniel to be disciplined for the action. McDaniel mentioned before beginning the prayer that some might be opposed. You may not feel comfortable, and I'm all right with that, I understand. For those of you who feel comfortable praying with me, that's fine. At, at a minimum, we're going to have a, a moment of silence for the folks in Barcelona and others that have lost their lives. McDaniel then asked God to bless and protect the district, guide his leadership, and bless victims of August Las Ramblas terror attack in Barcelona. Amen. Thank you, guys. Appreciate y'all very much. The prayer prompted the Freedom From Religion Foundation to send a letter to the district. It details how multiple McKinney community members and at least one employee reported the prayer to the organization. Beyond disciplining McDaniel, they want the district to tell employees they won't say any more prayers at school events. McKinney Board President Curtis Rippey said in a statement that the board has no plans to discipline Superintendent McDaniel with regards to complaints filed by the Freedom From Religion Foundation. The Freedom From Religion Foundation also asked the district to move the event from the Baptist Church, but the district says McKinney and other school districts have events there because it's big enough to hold everyone, has air conditioning and camera and audio equipment. In Texas, Ray Bogan. Prayer Fox controversy News. in Collin County. A group dedicated to the separation of church and state is blasting McKinney ISD. The superintendent of the district led a prayer during a mandatory staff assembly. It's a mandatory convocation for staff from McKinney ISD. A packed room with the superintendent in front. So for those of you who feel comfortable praying with me, that's fine. At, at a minimum, we're going to have a, a moment of silence. A prayer followed, and days later, so did this letter from the Freedom From Religion Foundation. These things are not appropriate for a government entity. Sam Grover says he received complaints about the prayer from several staff members. They felt excluded and ostracized as minority religious or non-religious uh, staff of the school district. Besides removing prayer from the event, Grover is asking for a change of venue from a church. A district spokesperson tells us they use that space because they don't have a big enough one, adding, quote, McKinney ISD respects and will continue to respect in the future the right of conscience of its students and staff. The incorporation of prayer at district functions is being evaluated and future events will speak for themselves. 
Grover is also asking in the letter that Superintendent Rick McDaniel be formally disciplined. The board president says there are no plans this is to not do the that. the first time the Freedom from Religion Foundation has filed complaints about McKinney ISD. In May of last year, the group raised concerns about teachers displaying crosses. High School was ordered to discontinue its traditional prayer before football games by the school district. You may recall a parent complained to the Freedom From Religion Foundation after the Lord's Prayer was read aloud at the season opener. Well, tonight, fans at Smith Station High vowed to not be silenced during the game at Garrett Harrison Stadium. That's where we find News 3's Ashley Garrett with a story you will see over on News 3. The atmosphere is filled with excitement today. Folks held true to their word here supporting Smith Station High and all of Lee County Schools, supporting the right to prayer, letting their voices be heard loud and clear. You just heard fans of Smith Station High reciting part of the Lord's Prayer. It happened at Garrett Harrison Stadium Friday night just before the team went head to head with Central High. Earlier this month, the Lee County School District issued a school prayer ban. This after one person complained to the Freedom From Religion Foundation after the Lord's Prayer was read aloud at the season opener. Others are also in support of Smith Station High. Meet Mike Green, owner of Green's Propane Gas in Phoenix City. He tells News 3 his response to the Lee County School prayer ban. My initial response was I was going to pull all our funding. We've been funding uh, one of the boosters of the football program and other sports at Smith Station for over 50 years when my grandparents started it. Green says since learning about the prayer ban, he decided to change his original idea for this year's Green's Propane Gas Advertisement set to run on the scoreboard at Smith Station High. Decided I was just going to put the Lord's Prayer on there, and went on Facebook and made a post. Wednesday night, Green started a GoFundMe page. He says he owns the rights to half of the scoreboard, but he also says based on the policy, it can't go up unless the other half of the board is paid for in the amount of $5,000. As of Thursday, Green says he reached more than half of his goal. I don't think we should be silent. I think we, we should have our voice heard. Yeah. Friday, Green got emotional explaining why he's so passionate about this effort. That being on the board won't silence anybody. And it gets the point across that as a community, we won't be silent. We're going to have our prayer up there. Green says when it comes to the Smith Station students shouting the Lord's Prayer at the game Friday night, he says he supports them 100%. And judging from the looks on most faces, it appears that many enjoyed saying the Lord's Prayer tonight, something some say is not only needed on the field, but everywhere. On your side in Phoenix City, Ashley Garrett, WRBL News 3. And now please join us for a moment of silence. speaker announced a moment of silence before the game. The Central High School student section began the Lord's Prayer loudly. This comes after the Smith Station football team faced backlash for using a school provided loudspeaker during their pregame prayer. The Lee County school system banning the practice after a spectator complaint. The school district is calling for an end to a long-standing tradition of student-led prayer before home football games. Well, the order was issued after the Freedom From Religion Foundation argued that the district was breaking the law. Well, Fox 5's Jacqueline Schultz reports from Phoenix City where community members organized a prayer in protest tonight. Instead of the typical moment of silence at the game between Central and Smith Station, students from both sides of the stadium said the Lord's Prayer out loud together in protest of the decision by Lee County Schools to end prayer over the loudspeaker at home games. 
Students and parents from both teams put aside game night rivalry in a show of faith. The prayer at the away game for Smith Station High against Central in Phoenix City, a protest against the decision by Lee County Schools to end a long-standing tradition at every home game for Smith Station, a prayer led by a student over the loudspeaker. Not right. We have the freedom to speak. It's a choice. You don't have to stand and participate. And my deepest prayer is that your name will not be forgotten oh between God, the games, the plays that are called. Katie Johnson, whose dad is a coach, helped lead home game prayers for Smith Station. It shook me so bad because I never imagined that God could be taken out of our community. They weren't really sad as they were kind of angry about it. The Freedom from Religion Foundation wrote a letter to Lee County Schools after it says a parent complained about the practice, stating it is illegal and unconstitutional for a public school to sponsor religious messages at school athletic events. The attorney for Lee Schools says in a letter it would comply with federal law and tells Fox 5 he advised the district to end the practice and advised all employees employees to stay away from organizing any sort of prayer. Many disagree with the decision, but others like Katie respect it. It's the right decision, no matter how much we don't like it. You know, we have to think of all aspects of every religion. If you want to pray, you pray. If not, you don't pray. Some students are going out there and doing it themselves. They've kind of, you know, made a little, you know, plan to compromise. As long as the kids can still come out and chain up and still pray, I think that's still